Thank you. So the, uh, we're going to do a presentation, right? Where it'll come up and I can actually change it with the uh, remote control. Um, thank you everyone for coming and uh, spending your day with us. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, it's probably a timely uh, event, you know, considering that in the last uh, four weeks since October 17th, the, uh, the markets have been uh, pretty volatile to the downside, at least in the cannabis uh, sector. So um, do we have a, a presentation or can we get it up? Perfect. All right. Uh, so uh, FSD Pharma, our ticker symbol on uh, the CSC is huge. So what are we about? Um, in, in, term, in a nutshell, when we began uh, the company, the, the idea really was sort of size matters. And, uh, and when it comes to property and real estate, it's location, location, location. So um, we are located only one hour east of Toronto on the 401. Uh, so it's a very easy drive to get to our facility. Uh, it is the uh, former craft plant. It's a 71 acre property in total. Our target um, in terms of expansion will be about 800,000 square feet. And then the second target, which will be on our 40 acre parcel of land that shareholders own with no debt, will get us up to about 3.8 million square feet of growing if we're able to uh, to, to achieve our, our dreams, which uh, hopefully because of our partner Oxley, who has very deep pockets, I think in their last quarter, they were sitting on about $250 million. It's a good sign that actually may uh, become a reality. Um, we have uh, uh, just signed uh, recently, I guess a recent big deal was uh, the signing of uh, the takeover of Therapix um, on the NASDAQ. Uh, so there's two reasons for that. Reason number one is that we are you know, very, very focused and engaged in the medicinal and, and pharmaceutical sides of cannabis, uh, a lot more so than the recreational. And uh, Therapix allowed us sort of a springboard platform uh, into IP and, and molecules to help you know, treat and or cure diseases, which is what is what our target is going to be. Um, and so we're, we're very, very excited. Uh, you know, right now we are uh, fairly well capitalized. I think uh, in our last set of financial statements, we'll have about you know, 27 million, $28 million. But the interesting part of it is that we don't I need to spend it on any of the build out because that's Oxley's job. So for us, luckily, we don't have to spend anything on capital. So what we have been doing is um, using the cash to, to more uh, incubate uh, and invest into other companies uh, that are in the cannabis space that are early stage and, and it really sort of with two guiding principles. Gui guiding number one is, is this a good investment for shareholders? And number two, is there some form of business development um, relationship that'll help out also the business of FSD Pharma. So, you know, as long as those two check marks are, are made, then, you know, we, we did take a look at deals. So we're in a unique position where with our extra capital and extra cash, we're looking at sort of becoming more of a cannabis incubator and, and that'll sort of be a, a focus that we continue on at least for the near term. So um, where do we see the, the, the future going? I, I, I think, um, you know, I, th I think if if uh, if you're focused only on the recreational market in Canada, uh, I think that's probably a mistake. The recreational market is is very very small when you look at the global size of things. What I would say is, you know, there was a lot of criticism in terms of the system. On October 17th, I think there was so much sort of um, everyone was so excited to see this date where you know when a G7 nation would legalize a, a recreational cannabis use, you know, for the first time. And that was very exciting and it drove the markets. And, you know, what it ended up being, unfortunately, was, you know, if you're looking forward to like a party or in this case, since Gene Simmons is going to be a speaker, I'll say if you're looking to go to a KISS concert, you know, October 17th sort of was, you know, we got to this party or this concert and it was, you know, basically like a, a kindergarten choir, you know, singing, a, you know, a, 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 a Christmas tune in, in a really off form and you only had two other people in the crowd. So it was just, it was such a, a dramatic letdown. And I think that letdown, you know, was because number one, um, in many ways, the infrastructure wasn't ready on, on the sales side, which everybody knows. And number two, a lot of uh, the LPs weren't ready as well. And, and so what we're seeing today uh, is your, your, or at least feedback that we're getting is that, you know, there, there are recreational buyers or, or regular recreational users 
that are still going back to the black market because uh, quite frankly, the quality is still better and the price is better. So you know, there's probably gonna be another six months of flux, at least in Canada until, uh, until both the government and the LPs get it right. Uh, but one thing is for sure, you know, in, at least in Canada, uh, this will be uh, on the recreational side, the fastest growing industry in 2019. And we'll start to see probably in about six months to nine months, these really rapid revenue growth stories with certain companies. Uh, today, there are too many LPs. Today, in our opinion, they are issuing too many licenses. Uh, so we think only the strong will survive. The strong being people that are capitalized properly uh, and people that have proper quality. Uh, quality for us at the end of the day is, is you know, indoor focused only. Uh, we don't believe that, um, you know, greenhouse or outdoor will be able to compete. Uh, and we think that, you know, over time, we think probably 18 to 24 months, you know, those prices will begin to go down. So again, it will only be the strong that survive. Expect a lot of merger and acquisition activity uh, in, in the space probably over the next 12 months. Uh, so to, from an excitement standpoint, this will be a very, very exciting space. I think from the standpoint where everyone is worried about, you know, when is it going to end and where the share price is going to stabilize, um, it's, it's probably, you know, when we look at the two sort of up and down cycles so far in the cannabis industry in Canada, you know, what ended up taking us out of it was the uh, Constellation Canopy deal. When they announced that deal on both, both times, the first time they announced it and the second one, Constellation made a $5 billion investment, you know, that did trigger this bull market run. So, you know, when we come to think about it, I think there's 38 other alcohol companies globally that do at least a billion dollars in sales or more. You know, there's Molson Coors and, and, and Can or, uh, Constellation that have done something, but you still have giants like Diageo that haven't done anything. You still have uh, the big tobacco companies that haven't done anything. You still have Big Pharma that hasn't done anything. You still have textile and pulp and paper companies that could get involved in the industry. So I think if we see another a giant deal, which will be imminent, I just don't know when, uh, you'll probably see the, you know, sort of the end of, of the bleeding in, in the markets and, and uh, hopefully it sort of triggers another uh, a bull market run. Um, to, to folks or, and to stay focused on, on what we're looking at doing, you know, we, we think pharma is where it's going to be at. Um, we think sort of cannabis biotechnology will be sort of the new most interesting frontier in medicine that we've seen since the discovery of, uh, of penicillin when they were playing around with molds. You know, and that is because when you look at how many molecules now have been discovered within cannabis, you know, it's a combination of those molecules that people refer to as the entourage effect is where sort of the key to treatment and to cures actually lie. And because there are so many molecules present within cannabis, when you're doing a multiplier effect of whatever, 244 times 244, that gives you, I think, trillions of, of combinations. So, you know, there's a lot out there. There's a lot uh, for companies to learn. But at the end of the day, it's, it's exciting for us also because I think anyone that's been involved in the industry, and, and I personally know, even with my own wife, for example, you know, that we've seen the positive medicinal effects of cannabis. You know, we've heard people that say it's helped them when they're going through cancer or they're going through... IBS or they have Crohn's disease or all these multitude of, of diseases. And you hear that people say, wow, you know, th this is something that's going to cure. The one size doesn't fit all. We know, we know that now scientifically. You can't just use any strain and that's going to cure or help any ailment or, or treat any disease. You know, but what we do know is there's a, a, a certain molecule sort of combination that definitely is showing a you know, promise that we've never seen before. And I think once uh, the USA opens up and, and, and you know, we expect in 2019 that something's going to happen on the medicinal side, not necessarily the recreational side, um, you know, that'll be, you know, I think it was, it was you know, right now I, I, I sort of think, you know, our stock is, it's, it's like Pearl Harbor, for example, you know, we're under attack, you're under attack by shorts, you're under attack by sellers. You know, but in World War II, it was awakening the sleeping giant, which was the United States of America. And when that happens, you know, really, really incredible things tend to happen. We think that's going to happen on, on the medicinal and biotechnology side of, uh, of, of the industry. Our plans are going to be completely global uh, because Canada is too small of a market. Um, you know, I think just the just our economy alone, you know, smaller than uh, than, than uh, you know, a few blocks in, in Manhattan when you look at sort of how money flows. Um, you know, we had always looked at, which was sort of fortuitous in, in how we 
always try to look towards is, you know, how did sort of Canopy and Afri start? And they actually started with food companies, which is the exact same thing that happened with FSD. And at the end of the day, you know, we will be focused on being the largest indoor supplier uh, of, of medical uh, cannabis in the world. Where we'll end up going, and it's just sort of a, a, a picture that'll show you how we're gonna get there. Uh, today, we do have uh, 25,000 square feet uh, growing currently. Uh, it'll be at capacity, we hope, within about the next six weeks. Uh, we have 220,000 square feet that Oxley is building up that's under construction. Uh, so there's a lot of construction if you ever come to the facility uh, at the moment. And, and I think we're well equipped. Uh, this was a, a very phenomenal building that was built uh, by Kraft and, and Kraft usually doesn't really cut corners, at least not, you know, uh, 20, 30 years ago. So it's an extremely well-built structure. It's a food grade facility, so it really works perfectly for our, our needs. Um, when we were talking about the investments and this theory that, you know, we can use our extra capital because we don't really have to spend it, what do we use it on? So we've been making, you know, strategic investments. Canera is uh, our partner. It's our site B in Quebec. It's one hour outside of Montreal. That is an indoor facility that has a total size of 620,000 square feet. Uh, we've just uh, closed $55 million in financing uh, for Canera uh, through uh, actually my investment bank. Uh, and, uh, and so they have 140,000 square feet under construction as, as phase one. It's also an easy drive from Montreal and this would be the second biggest indoor facility in Canada. So together, uh, you know, between us, we, we're sort of that aspiration of being the biggest is there. Um, High Tide is a, uh, is a uh, retail, uh, predominantly focused in Alberta, uh, but they do have Saskatchewan. They are targeting BC and they will be targeting Ontario. Uh, it helps because if we have recreational partners, I think when it's time to, you know, to sell or who's going to buy it, I mean, it would probably help when your retail uh, storefronts are actually asking for your product as opposed to just sort of going into into a, a, a provincial government, you know, windfall or, you know, you get whatever they give you. I think uh, they'll be able to ask for certain products. I think that'll be helpful. Therapix, we talked about Therapix right now has two molecules and phased trials. Uh, this is about a delivery system. Uh, one of them is um, sort of focused on dementia uh, and, uh, and is very exciting. And, and the reason why we focus on or they focus on dementia first is because that's uh, easier to get uh, through the process. And then once you get it through the process, you know, you can, under, you do realize that there are other targets that you can end up, you know, focusing on. Uh, Psycan Therapeutics, there are um, Israeli uh, counterpart. They also are involved. They're really focused more on the, um, on, on the, uh, uh, Targeting, uh, you know, reduction of swelling. In, in this case right now, and we made this interesting announcement uh, last week about their steady stomach program, which is focused on IBS and IBD, people that have irritable bowel syndrome for whatever reasons. Uh, they found that there's been some really sort of unique and exciting aspects, and they had a really um, interesting sort of patent event that you can read up about. Um, and then our partnerships, so Nature's Purist is our Jamaican partner. We're doing that also because we uh, just have access to very, very inexpensive uh, product there. And if one day they allow the oils to be uh, exported, it could be helpful, at least in the, in the near term. Uh, Oxley, of course, we've talked about. And Cantab uh, are the uh, pill manufacturers. They make time-release capsules. They're patent pending for a number of different um, programs. So Therapix, uh, one of the uh, items about uh, Therapix, which is uh, very exciting for us, is uh, Professor Raphael Meshulam, who is known as the godfather of medicinal cannabis. He uh, was the co-discoverer of THC and the co-discoverer of the entourage effect. Uh, it, you know, without him, I don't think we would be anywhere uh, near, you know, where we are today. And, and this is, you know, sort of the breeding of what is about to happen, which is going to get a lot more exciting, even in his mind. Um, when you look at the phase trials of Therapix, in total, they do have four molecules. Two of them are in phase twos, and the other two, I believe, are in phase one or in, or in pre. Uh, Sican, it's it's uh, the same thing. It's a uh, is really they're uh, connected to Tel Aviv University. Uh, we have an exclusive license with them. We're also an investor in Sican. So currently, FSD Pharma owns 15% of Sican. Um, they are, are focused, and, and, and they have, I, I think, a, a, a pool that they're targeting of about, of about 100 uh, different uh, compounds uh, or biotechnology compounds. So we're very excited to work with them. Uh, they also work with the Wiseman Institute in Israel. So these are sort of two of the top uh, uh, biotech uh, Israeli uh, companies to work with. 
Uh, Canero, I've already talked about, High Tide as well. Um, Oxley, you know, great, great partners. Chuck Rafishi, who is the co-founder of Canopy, uh, is the chairman. Uh, Hugo, who is one of, I would say, probably one of the most knowledgeable people within the industry in Canada, is the CEO. Love the relationship with them. You know, we work together very, very well. They've been very, very helpful. Uh, in Canatab, like we, we also talked about, uh, they have begun construction in our, uh, in our site. So we anticipate them to be uh, producing in Q1 2019. Uh, and then Nature's Purist, it's Jamaica. You know, outside of Jamaica, it's also probably a very nice place to visit when we need holidays because we're all working too hard in this industry as of today. Our management team, you'll be able to hear uh, our new interim CEO, Dr. Raza Bakari, an amazing guy. Very, very well connected if you do a little bit of research on him uh, with uh, uh, politics in the United States and, and really a great team overall. There's one of the couple of pictures and you'll have the opportunity uh, here from Dr. Bakari at 2.30 p.m. Anyways, thank you all for, uh, for your time.